Hello. Today I'll talk about wavelet transform the exact analysis. Mm -hmm. Before I talked about wavelet transform, uh, let me describe your previous studies as for atomic discrimination. The atomic discrimination in the mirror is very important because it addresses uh, chemical and physical properties. To understand the, the atomic discrimination, researchers are using AFM, STM, TAM, and wavelet transform, as you see like these uh, figures. As other tools, the wavelet transform accepts can show us the discriminated, I'm sorry, discriminated atoms in K space and R space simultaneously. It is one of powerful tools uh, to uh, describe atomic discrimination, including bond ranks and atomic species. Now, now I'd like to explain SAP's uh, measurement and reduction of data to get XAPS as a function of K. The X-ray comes from synchrotron and goes to double monochromator. After picking X-ray, what you want, it passes through I0 chamber. After that, some X-ray is scattered by the sample and other X-ray transmits the sample. We can collect the scattered X-ray by fluorescence detector and transmission signal by transmission chamber. Is right? Okay, we can make a total absorption function as a function of uh, energy as such as these figures. Okay, now we are using platinum foil at L3H. The pink one, which is the oscillating part, indicates the exaps. When it subtracts the atomic background and divide it using at these steps, we can get the exaps as this one. Especially, this is the exaps as a function of k-space, which is obtained from converting energy space to momentum k-space. The exaps in k-space and can be wavelet transform and free transform as these figures. These figures. The free transform exaps can show us the atomic position around a probing atom. However, it can't visually, I said visually, it can't visually describe the atomic phase shift and the backscattering amplitude of neighboring atoms because of the properties of Fourier transform. The atomic phase shift and the backscattering amplitude are related with the wave number k. Also, both of them is atomic intrinsic properties as for neighboring atoms. The atomic phase shift and the backscattering amplitude are not visually addressed by free transform. Even though the exaps in R space contains their information, as you see the magnitude of exaps R as a function of R. Right? If we want to know exact physical properties from the exaps in R space, we have to feed the data to theoretical models. I prepared the models, you can see this one. Yeah, which have platinum, platinum 1, platinum, platinum 2, platinum, platinum 3 pair, pairs from our probing atom. The neighboring atom pairs from the models correspond to the magnitude of the exaps in our space. Furthermore, there is a multiple scattering path PT, PT, PT. After fitting, we can get the local structure information, including the coordination number, bonding length, and the violet vector sigma square, as shown in the table. The fitting result highlights that the structural properties were correspond to the result of XRD. Okay? The fitting of the XAPS in R space can give us detailed 
detailed structural information. However, the processing time to fit data to the theoretical, theoretical model is so long. Maybe you have experience like this. Often, we have to visually understand the structural properties, including atomic discrimination in advanced, in advanced data fittings. Especially, the magnitude of the exaps in our space can't visually reveal the discrimination for atoms at the same bonding length. Then, the wavelet transform exaps can visually show Earth, atomic species, and the position in two dimension quantum map simultaneously, as you see the left figure. The wavelet transform exaps visually visually offers Earth structural information in K space and R space. Now I'm presenting the wavelet transform. To understand the wavelet transform, I first introduce a short time Fourier transform. It is referred to STFT. The general Fourier transform requires long range time. Therefore, it is difficult to study the change of Fourier transform in short time range. The STFT is available for researching FT Fourier transform in short time range. The window function, you can see, the window function is used for integral as short time range and the signal, I'm sorry, and the signal in each range is converted by the Fourier transform integral. And then the magnitude of STFT is addressed in time frequency space as shown in the right figures. In the STFT, the window function size is not changed, which means uh, that the resolution of STFT is independent on frequency. Yeah. So, <clears throat> small window function size, delta t, makes a long change of, long change of frequency, delta omega, due to uncertainty, uncertainty principle. We need to analyze the signal with a small delta t for high frequency and large delta t for low frequency. However, the SDFT doesn't satisfy this condition. It's a problem. To redeem the I'm sorry, to redeem the SDFT of this advantage with a fixed window function. The function for low and high frequency is defined as this formula. A is a scaling factor depending on frequency. Psi m is an elementary model wavelet. Psi i is a scaled daughter wavelet. Omega m is the center frequency of a model wavelet and it can be defined arbitrarily. There are many wavelets to increase the resolution, as shown in these figures. Previously, the MOLET wavelet, which is a model wavelet function, is used for a wavelet transform exaps by Funke. When the scaling factor A is used, the DORA function is obtained like this. To be wavelet transform, the convolution integral is used in this equation. Until now, I'm telling you wavelet transform in time frequency regime. Now, we need to change the time frequency regime to momentum position regime to regime to apply exaps. Therefore, the regime is change the time to k and frequency to position with two multiplication. And the sigma in model, model function is changed to BCM square for new wavelet later, yeah, which is called spread. Later, I will tell you about that. Finally, the 
the model wavelength function in time frequency is changed like this one. This figure demonstrates the convolution of wavelength for signal. Right? You can see. The red oscillation is a wavelength function at time t1.